Hello, welcome to Chris's Beer Reviews. How are you? Hope you're doing uh, really well. Um, I'm hoping this is recording because my daughter's on the camera. She's been messing me around, trying to tell me it's playing when it isn't, just to prank me, I suppose. But yeah, it's time for another beer review, and this is one that I'm. This is definitely playing, isn't it, Leah? Because if I waste this beer, I'm going to be really annoyed. <laughs> is it definitely playing? No, I trust you then. Anyway, back to the beer. This is one that I am super excited about. It's been reviewed many, many times. Uh, I've watched a couple of reviews on it um, over the, the last sort of year or so, and I've now finally got my hands on it. It's from Castile. It's the Cuvée du Chateau. It's an 11% Belgian. There it is. And I'm really looking forward to this one. I think this is going to be a belter. I think this is going to be absolutely right up my street. So I hope I'm not disappointed. There's the bottle cap. I hope that's focusing. I'm holding on to it for a bit longer than I normally do. So yeah, let's crack on with this one. Um, it's got to go. Of course, it's got to go in the uh, Castile glass. Beautiful glass. Uh, one of my most favourite Belgian beer glasses and I've got quite a few but yeah I, I really like this glass so let's crack on let's get this one out in the glass see how she looks how she sniffs and of course importantly how she tastes so not long ago I did the Castile Barista chocolate quad and that was one of probably one of the beers of the year for me even though it's been around for a long time it's the first time I'd had it and it's definitely up there in my top five beers of the year. And I've got a sneaky feeling the Cuvée du Chateau could be could be up there with it as well. Let's hope so. Hope I haven't overhyped it for myself, but we'll find out. Let's get this one in the glass. I know my good friend Barry from Barry Order Beer, no idea. He reviewed this recently. He loved it. He loved the chocolate barista as well. So as you can obviously tell, I'm not in my usual setting. I'm sitting at my bar, sitting in the lounge. It's festive time. It's Christmas time. Time to sit with the tree. Let's pop that there. I don't know if that's in the picture or not. But yeah, apparently it is because my daughter's giving me the thumbs up in the background. Look at that. There it is. Very, very dark. Very, very dark indeed. Almost, almost stout like jet black. Really struggling to find any kind of ruby colours at the bottom. That is proper dark. No head, but that's fine. It's gonna happen on an 11% beer. You know, if you're new to kind of Belgian beers or high ABV beers, they don't hold a head. Don't be worried if they don't hold a head. But look at that. What a lovely dark looking beer and such a beautiful glass as well. There we go again. <laughs> there we go again, did it the other day. If you've heard that, noise it's my um stoma i have a stoma and it does like to fart and it's done it twice now in a couple of videos my daughter's wetting herself uh, so yeah if you have watched all my videos or if you're new to my channel uh, i have got um, bowel disease i've got crohn's disease and i have got a stoma and that little bugger farts and it never you never know when it's going to happen and it's just done it again it did it in my bigger cinder toffee stout or about six minutes 40 it does it uh, i have got another youtube channel completely dedicated to crohn's disease and life with uh, an ostomy and it's done it again gotta love it gotta love it anyway let's crack on and see how this sniffs oh if that noise didn't come out in the video i'm gonna sound like a right weirdo Aroma-wise, it just smells divine, absolutely divine. It's, it's delicate, the aroma, but there's a lot in that aroma. It's not delicate as in there's no aroma. There's lots of different things delicately working away in there. There is quite a, a kind of vinous type feel to it, almost wine-like. And it's got lovely, almost like alcohol-soaked fruit aromas in there. And almost like a another type of alcohol drink, almost port-like wine. It's more of a white wine. Even though it's such a dark beer, it has got kind of a white wine aroma to it. That smells really good. That smells very, very good. 
I can't wait to see how this tastes. Cheers, everybody. I really hope this doesn't let me down. It's at a good temperature as well, this. It says serve it at 12. It's got, it probably is in that 12 degree mark. My daughter's just gesturing me to get on with it. She doesn't like it when I do all the waffling, so I'm gonna just keep waffling. Just to annoy her, she's swinging her arms around, saying, get on with it. <laughs> I'm gonna get on with it, Leah, I'm going in. Cheers, everybody. I should have my daughter in the background more often. She's entertaining. Oh. Mm. That's just incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Do you want to taste this, Leah? Oh my goodness. I've got to say some more. I've got to keep drinking some more. That is where it's at. That is absolutely where it's at. That is the perfect, absolutely perfect Christmas beer. I can imagine this would be absolutely incredible with some really good cheese and crackers as well. Because of the flavours in there, they're going to complement some cheeses so, so well. Oh, it's just so ridiculously drinkable and I just want to keep drinking it without even talking about it. In its simplest term, if you want it in its simplest term, without making it too complex, it's a ridiculously good dark Christmas cake full of booziness, full of port-like booziness, and it's just obscene how good that is. Lots of alcohol soaked, candied raisins, sultanas, figs, prunes. It's all in there. With this lovely kind of high end kind of white wine bit to it. It's got a port to it and I love port. And this has got that in it. It's got a lovely port kind of feel to it. The mouth feels incredible. The carbonation is, is busy but delicate at the same time. It's like tiny carbonation bubbles just kind of popping around and just lifting the flavours. It's ridiculously good. And then, let me talk about that 11% ABV. 11% ABV is so well hidden. So, so well hidden. It's, it's just ridiculously dangerous. I reviewed um, a stout the other day, the, the biggest cinder toffee stout at 10%. And you could really feel that 10% alcohol in it. This is 11% and it's ridiculously hidden. You don't know it's there. This could get you into an awful lot of trouble. One of how easy this is to drink, how enjoyable it is, and that 11% is, is just so hidden. It, it's just an incredible beer. And the only thick thing, one of the only things I criticise Castile about is, is the bland labelling, but I buy with my eyes, and if you buy with your eyes, just ignore the fact that that's got a bland looking label, because what's in that bottle is, is just incredible. It feels really aged, and it, it's not, these aren't aged. The Castile from what I've read, Castile aged a donker, their donker, and they aged it over 10 years, and they wanted to recreate that in this without going through the aging process, and they've done it, and it's incredible. Why are you giggling your pants off? Because the, the cat's attacking my bottle opener. Um, it's just incredible. How they've done this it is ridiculous. You could probably age this anyway. I've got no doubt you could put this one away for a couple of years and age it, and it'd be even better. It's, it's a perfect winter beer. It's an absolutely perfect sit on the front of a roaring fireplace. If you've got an open fire, which I'd love, I'd love to have a house with an open fire, this is the beer for it. It's a contemplating beer. It's sitting there in front of an open fire, slow drinking this incredibly good beer. Oh, it's fantastic. Like I say, lots of dark fruits, but they're candied and it's like they've been soaked in, in port or in something else. Raisins, sultanas, figs, it, it's all in there. Candied, 
almost a bit of burnt sugar type aroma to it, aroma, a flavour to it. Oh, it's just divine. It's a boozy, boozy Christmas cake with port. It, it's incredible with that little hint of kind of white wine element to it as well, which is amazing. I've waffled on for long enough about how good this beer is. It's not expensive. It's about three quid a bottle. And it just also shows if you're massively into craft beers, and craft beers can be expensive, that, you know, we can't hide from that fact. But these Belgian beers that drop in at three quid in that region are just incredible, and they produce it constantly. Oh, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Is it beer of the year for me? No. Is it in the top five? Without a doubt it is. Is it as good as the chocolate quad? I'm not sure. I think, I think the chocolate element with the quad just raises it, just raises it another level. But it's bloody close. It really is bloody close. It's fantastic. I've gone on for long enough. This video has gone on for long enough. I'm all done. Go out and bloody well buy yourself some of this and certainly get some for the Christmas period and get yourself some and enjoy it. The, my daughter's sticking the cats in the video. I'm getting out of here before this goes all incredibly wrong. I'm all done. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs>